Morning. Morning. Rose, got a card here up our car. Uh, dear all, getting used to the heat with the help of our own private pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Working hard but enjoying it loads. <laughs> Missing Brookside clothes, honest. <laughs> See you all soon, love. Shake Big bangs. P.S. <laughs> I've just got myself an Enrage cabo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, seems like he's really enjoying himself out mm -hmm. there, doesn't he? I miss him, but I think it's the best place for him. Mm, I agree. And the sooner I see her and Becca get out there, the better. Well, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Mm. You are, love. Well, I can't help thinking Carl and Sarah are better apart. I mean, when they're together, there's nothing but misery. Ah, now all they need is a fresh start. That place will sort them out, you'll see. I still don't like the idea of keeping all our winners down here, you know. Hey, we better get a move on. I'm going to be late for work. It's just not safe for a start. I mean, it's not that long ago since we were bagel, was it? Don't be talking like that. You're tempting fate. It's not just that. It's us as well. If we leave it here, we'll start dipping into it. Yeah, well, we can talk about that later, eh? Yeah, yeah. Come on, I want to get to work sometime today. All right. Balance was asleep when the fire caused by a 40 electric fire. Kylie's still asleep? Yeah. You haven't known a child to sleep in like my one. Oh. Doesn't take after you, then, do you know? She was driving up at the crack of dawn every morning when she was little. Oh. Until she was 14. Then it was a battle getting her up before midday. Is this the last of the milk? Oh, love, I'm sorry. Is there none left? Yeah, I've some of mine. I've got too much. It doesn't matter. No, go on. Just top it up with water. No, no, you're all right. Listen, when you were little and money was tight, I always had to water down the milk for yours and little Jimmy's sugar puffs. I didn't do you any harm then, did I? Go on. Yeah. It doesn't matter, Mum. I don't feel like any. <laughs> Listen, that's all that semi-skim milk is, you know. Water down milk. Yes, Mum. I'll go up and wait, Kylie. Sorry, Jack, I finished the milk off. No, it's all right, love. It's my fault. Should have ordered more, shouldn't I? You know, having a full house now. All right, mate. All right, Zinny. Uh, we owe you some money from the other night, don't we? Rosie said she was a bit short, like. Would have done it last time you were in, Eddie. Uh, I don't want people talking about us. You know, lots of winners, and we can't pay our way. Can they come from me, mate? Here's a change, Ed. Cheers, mate. All right. Got a letter from Carl this morning. Sounds like he's really enjoying it. Yeah, no, we got one and all. So, uh, any more thoughts about you and Rebecca joining them out there? You never know. If he settles into his job and behaves himself, I'll consider it. Yeah. Sound. So, uh, how are things with you and Rosie? Well, I think we're finally sorting ourselves out. She seems to be laying off the bingo and all that. Oh, good. Right, better get off. Cheers. See you. See ya. Oh, yeah, there. Uh, when's your Rosie going to be appearing on Mastermind then? How do you mean? Well, the amount of time she spent on the quiz machine the other night, she must be good at it. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, thank her for us, will you? She bought a lot of scratch cards off me, you know, for our little school appeal. I wish everyone was so generous. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will. Ta-da. See you, Ed. Bye. Thanks very much. Oh, Jackie, could you pop that in the window for me, please? Tenants wanted? Uh, yes, it's just a three months let. Um, actually, I've had a bit of a change of heart and decided I ought to follow Jean. I've been a bit worried about her trekking round the world all on her own. How much is that, please? 50p a week, love. Oh, right. There's a uh, 50p to be going on with. Thanks a lot. OK, love. Tra. Hello, Ed Tra. Michael. Hi. Hi. Hi, love. Oh, do you know, he says he's planning to follow Jean on her travels. Oh, no, I think it's dead romantic him following her all that way. He says she just arrived in Surat. Oh, no, I think when I get to that age, Lan Dudnay will be far enough for me. I'll just chuck some tomatoes on the garden, OK? My dad's contribution to the tea. Oh, all right, love. See you later. See you. Sure. Hiya. 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 Where have you been? Oh, I just called into town. I had to look around the shops and I uh, called into a flat agency. How come? Look. I'm dead grateful to you for letting me stay, but it's not fair on you and me dad, is it? Now you've got this lovely house. You shouldn't have everyone staying. But, love, we like having you and little Kylie staying with us. I know, but I need my own space as well, and it's hard moving home after so long. So where are you going to go? To know. Wasn't much in the agency to suit us. 
Well, look, you know you can stay with us as long as you like. Oh, thanks. Yeah, have you got any idea where I can get my dad for his birthday? I'm getting him a jumper from Mark, so you know smart him up with this. <laughs> what, you get the man who's got everything? Hey, hang on. What about the Crosby's bungalow? Well, I only wanted to spend a tenner on him. For you to live in. It's only over the close, look. I mean, it's only for a few months, but it'll be perfect. A bungalow on your close? Hmm? Probably too much for me. I'm sure your dad would help you out a bit. Especially if he knows it means you and little Kylie will be over the road. Look, you hold on to that and we'll see what your dad thinks over the weekends. What's it like? Oh, Linz, it's lovely. It's just what you want. A little garden for Kylie. We'll be just over the road, but you'd have your independence. <gasps> you'd have the best of both worlds. Oh, yeah, forgot to tell you. We're getting our tea cook for us tonight. Our Michael's trying to impress his schoolie with his cooking. Oh, uh, <laughs> tell him none for me, thanks. I'm going out to have rules. Ah, oh, Blair, would you have to? I've already promised her now. Well, where are you going? Just round to a new flat, help her move in. Oh, well, that's all right. Invite her round here after. Ah, oh, Michael won't mind. Well, actually, uh, there's a few girls going. Well, I just hope he doesn't take all this personal, you know. You knocking back his kind offer of a meal. Only happens once in a lifetime. Eddie? Gotcha. You're dipping into the winnings, eh? I think you're the one who's been helping yourself. How do you mean? You've been milking this, haven't you? No. Don't lie to me. I've counted it and there's four grand short and I can guess where it's gone. Bingo all, slot machines, scratch cards. What, you're accusing me of spending £4,000 on scratch cards? Well, it's gone somewhere, and the way you've been lately, God knows how much you're capable of gambling away. I just don't know you. You've never been the same since that hospital business. Yeah, well, I think you're the one who's changed. I like a bit of a go at the bingo now and again, and an odd scratch card. Where's the problem? It's called enjoying yourself. Oh, I. And what about the quiz machine at the pizza parlor? You couldn't even resist the gamble while you were picking up food for us, could you? And there's me going in there like a divvy, worrying because you didn't have enough money to pay when all along you'd blown it on that machine and more stupid bloody scratch cards. Oh, everyone's jangling about me now, are they? I had a few goes on a quiz machine while I waited the other night. What's all the fuss? A few goes? That's not what I had. And what about the scratch cards, eh? That was the night we were going to stay in. No bingo, no gambling, just a night in with a video and something to eat. I can't even trust you to go out on your own for five minutes, can I? Of course you can. And it's not just about the other night. It's about all this gambling. You make it sound like it's proper gambling. Like I'm losing on the horses or at the casino. It's just a bit of fun. And you can win a few bob as well. Yeah, and lose a lot more. It's a mugs game, Rosie, and I think you've been losing more than you're cracking on because all this money's gone somewhere. Yeah, on a new car. What about all the presents and the holiday we're paying for for everyone? We started with a hundred grand. Half it went to the Crosbys. I've counted up everything else we spent out on and there's still four grand short. Now, the way things are looking, I don't think we can pay for the rest of the holiday. Not with only this much left. I suppose I'm to blame. Well, if you haven't spent it, I mean, Ali haven't touched it, and it's gone missing somewhere, so all I can think of is to call in the police. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? Not if there's thousands missing. We're down to 13 grand. Must have made a mistake. I haven't. I've checked it over and over. I'd better call the police. Well, um, I might have dipped into it a couple of times, but I certainly haven't spent that much. Rosie, you just swore that you hadn't touched any bit at all, and now you're saying you have. You're gonna have to face up to it. You've got a gambling problem, and something's gonna be done about it. What's that all about? What do you think? Jenny. Jenny. Who else? Well, can't they stop us sending you letters? This one came through her dad. She wants me to help her in court next week. What, so she can go free and so many again? Oh, no, she reckons she'll leave me alone if I can help her stay out of prison. Well, we've heard a promise of before. Well, she was all over sin. I've got to go through the whole nonsense again in front of a court. Yeah, well, I'll be there with you. Don't worry. Look, Mick, it's a straightforward case. They're going to find her guilty, and that's the last you're going to ever hear of her. So don't worry. What are we going to do then, eh? We can't carry on leaving 13 grand lying around the house. We're going to have to put it somewhere safe. Out of my reach. Can't put it in the bank because of the legal aid people, so we're going to have to put it somewhere else. How about in our Mo's account? Look at your letters, yeah? Right, I'll 
give it a ring, see if she wants to come around for a tea later. But I'd appreciate you not going on about all this in front of her and making a show of me. Oh, don't you worry. I don't want anyone knowing our business, but just make up some excuse. Do you think she'd be all right with it, like? You mean, can we trust her? Oh, no, no, not exactly. So, because I enjoy a game of bingo and a go on the scratch cards, you think our mo might start oh, spending all the cash like it runs in the family or no, something? No, I didn't mean it well, like that. what did you mean, then? Well, for God's sake, can we stop arguing over this money? All we've done is bicker and fight since we've got it. First with the Crosbys, now between ourselves. All that's done is bring us misery. I wish we'd never won the bloody thing. Come on, I'm about to pour. You can leave those down by the stereogram if you like. Now, you're welcome to use it, but you have to put a 10p on the arm, otherwise it'll jump. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, sit down. So, how many sugars do you have, then? Oh, three and a half for me, please. I'm cutting down. <laughs> it's one you haven't got whims. And it's not for you, is it, Bev? No, Tar, sweet enough. So, how long have you been living here, then, Julia? Oh, since I was first married. 46 years come June. It's lovely. It's like a little palace. Well, I try to keep it nice. All my stuff's in now. I just need to get it upstairs, out the boxes and sort it all out. Oh, I'll give you a hand. Doesn't your own mind just staying out, then? No, we're our own people. And what about your little one? Oh, he just gives him his tea and puts him down, no problem. The difference these days? When Irene was little, I used to have a fed and in bed before my Arthur was even home from work. Really? And Grandma Roberts lived with us. That was my father's mother. I had her to look after, as well as on the house. What time are you with you at the Aussie? Well, actually, I was thinking of calling in sick, staying off home for your first night here. No, oh, I don't want you neglecting your patients, just for me. Be you sure you'd be all right in a strange house on your own? I'll be here with them. I mean, later on. I mean, I don't get in till nearly half past ten, and you'll be well gone by then, won't you, Bev? I'm a big boy now, aren't I, Beverly? Well, I know. But even Irene wouldn't stay in this place on her own. Mind you, it's probably a father's fault. Put the wind up her for years, telling her all about Icky the fire bobby. Who? Icky the fire bobby. <laughs> he scared the living daylights out of our poor Reedy when she was little, my Arthur did. Well, you don't need to worry about me. I'll be all right. <laughs> oh, well, listen, if you're feeling hungry a bit later on, I've got some liver in. I'll leave it in the oven for you. Oh, lovely. One of my favourites. Right, should we get cracking upstairs, then? Yeah, come on. Um. I'll keep popping up, just to make sure, you know, everything's all right. Hi, Jack. Hi, uh, listen, Mick's just delivered a pizza. Do you fancy some? Oh, no, thanks. Oh, go on. It's extra large. It's too much for me and Lindsay. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll have some if there's any left over later on, all right? All right, love. Come in, mate. All right, then. Yay. <laughs> Oh, Leon, Jim used to have one of these. I loved it, you know. Yeah, it's a little Roots Christmas present. It's Cracker Sesame Street, isn't it? They still watch it, you know. Yeah, I know, Bert and any of the best things on the telly. Can't wait to watch it with Ruth if I ever get the chance. Listen, uh, how come you sat in there on your top? I feel like I'm imposing sitting in there all the time. Anyway, I'm reading a good book. So oh, look. Ian Banks. Never read of him, any good. Well, Mike Dixon lent it to me. I thought it might have been a bit much, but it sounds, you know, you can borrow one after me if you want. Yeah, no, well, mate. Need something to keep my mind occupied. Oh, don't be letting this title get to you. Oh, son, I'm still a week away and it's all I'm thinking about. Yeah, well, I know how you feel. I've been there too, you know. Ah, it's gonna be telling those lies that we were a couple, you know, that we were engaged. She'll probably say that I pushed her down the stairs at Mrs. Gag's that time and all. Yeah, well, she also shot her busy and he's gonna be testifying against her. So you won't be able to lie about that. Do you want to bet? I'll get the blame for that. You know, I drove her to it. Yeah, but she brought the gun. Yeah, to protect herself against me. Why do you think her half fella got that, that private eye to try and dig up some dirt on me? Oh, Mick, anyone can see she's on a bend. Yeah, but then it all boils down to the word of a respectable white middle-class school teacher against the word of a black pizza delivery man from Liverpool, who, as happens, has been involved with the police a few times. But it's not like that. Well, tell that to the press, sin. They're gonna have a field day with this, aren't they? Well, the judge will see through all that. Bloody hell, sin. I thought you'd be the last person to start praising the fairness of British justice. Yeah, I know. So let's just hope that he can get it right for once. But what if they do believe her? What's going to happen then? What's in store for me if she gets off? Oh, there's no chance. But what if she does? What if she walks free, sin? She won't. Just when my life was getting back to normal, all this starts again. 
When is it ever going to end? Eh? Thirteen thousand. Well, where's it all gone? You want a hundred grand? Half of it went to the Crosbys and the rest. Well, we've just spent it. What on? I mean, I'm not being funny, like, but it's not as if you handed out any massive dropsies to your family, is it? Uh, no, but we paid a big deposit on the holiday for all of us. And we've got everyone nice Christmas presents. And we're getting a new car. It just all adds up. We, we didn't realise, did we, Rose? So, apart from this legal aid business, you put it in my account to stop yourselves from blowing it all? Well, yeah, but we don't like having that amount of cash lying around the house either, you know. I mean, you can't be too careful. Too right. And how do you know I won't do a runner to Marbella with all your cash? Because we trust you, dear. <laughs> Sounds like you can't trust yourselves, that. So, uh, we can use your account, then? Yeah. Have I got some of the interest, like? And as long as you're willing to take the risk, I won't put it all on the horses. <laughs> Are you taking any of these posters down? Well, I don't know what Jules would say. Looks like she hasn't touched anything in here since her daughter left. I know, yeah. I think she died. It's like a shrine. Oh, don't say that. I've got to sleep in here. Don't want that wallpaper giving me the willies. Oh, it's lovely. Really suits you. This is the most. Hey, if Julia knew you were crying an innocent young girl with booze on your first night under a roof, she'd go mad. It's just a little drink to celebrate my new home. Where's the harm in that? Mm, yeah. Cheers. To my new bachelor pad. And all who sail in her. Quite cosy, really. Yeah, right little love nest. Well, that figures, doesn't it? Because you certainly love yourself. Hey, you cheeky bear. Hey, you, your wife, Peter. I'll bury you under the patio. Not me. I like giving the women pleasure, not pain. Go on, you smoothie. I do. So, where? Uh, what does your fella do to please you, then? Well, the moment he babysits. No, seriously. Go on, tell us all your saucy secrets. I am being serious. Well, we've had to take things easy, you know, since his angina. Try and get things going again, but he's worried in case he overdoes it and has another turn. Go away. I mean, I'm sure he'll be himself again once he's better. And what would you do if he doesn't get better? Well, he will. If anything does happen to him, has he made arrangements for you and Josh, like insurance and wills and that? Oh, no. He'll be fine in a couple of months. Well, I still think he should have something lined up just in case. Go away, will you? You're depressing me. I'm sorry, but you're a mate. And I care about me mates. No, that's too far, Mike. Give us it, will ya? Michael! Come in. Right, come on, try again. Maximum stopping distance at 50 miles an hour. Oh, <laughs> just thought I'd bring you both up a nice cup of tea, seeing how you made that lovely lasagna. <laughs> yeah, it was dead nice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, very. Didn't know, such a good cook. Yeah, it's no problem, anyone can do it. Right, well, I'll uh, leave you to it then, eh? Your stopping distances, that is. <laughs> Put him in it, offering us biscuits and more tea. I can't believe he's chaperoning us. No, he isn't, is he? You just watch him. I hate living at home. After you've been away, it's ten times worse. Well, why don't you move out and get another flat? <laughs> yeah, I wish. I just couldn't afford it. You could share with someone. Yeah, I'd love to. Anything to get out of here. Is it all? Are you still here, Bev? I've uh, just finished unpacking my stuff and sorting it all out. And uh, he didn't want me to leave him alone with the heat of fire, Bobby. So, uh, what do you think, then? It's lovely. You've done a good job, haven't you? Everything fits in really well. Do you fancy something to eat? Yeah, I am a bit peckish. Well, I'll go down and do some bread and butter for that liver and onion. I'm sure Bev's keen to get off home now, aren't you, love? So, when approaching a marked unmanned crossing... Hey, what about your hand signals? Forget about my hand signals. Sorry to barge in. <laughs> I just thought Rachel might like a nice cup of before she goes. It is, uh, getting on a bit, you know. <laughs> no, she doesn't want another cup of tea, or biscuits, or cakes, and she doesn't want to watch the derby match preview either. Ah, yeah, well, I knew that she liked football, so I thought she might be interested. Just leave us alone, eh, Dad? Right, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, he means well. <sighs> no, he doesn't. He's just being nosy, making sure nothing's going on. It's too mad, then. I'm gonna have to start looking for a place of my own, I'm telling you. Ooh. How about sharing a place with me, then? Um. Well, I don't know. I've never even thought about that. Well, we get on dead well, don't we? And we could both do a moving. 
I mean, I do like sharing a place with Jack and Katie, but it's just a bit cramped, that's all. Well, that's a big step, you know, moving in with somebody. We need to start going out with each other. Well, I'm not proposing or anything. I just think it makes sense for us to do it, that's all. Well, I'll think about it, OK? There you go. A seasonal touch just to finish the place off. Yeah, as long as you haven't got any mistletoe. Hey, look at the state of you making the butt. Looks like we've been up to something, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the nearest we'll get to it and all. Oh, but what about you, Beth? It must be hard not being able to have a physical relationship with Ron. Well, it is, but I love him, so until we can, I'm just going to put up with it. No one should suppress the natural ages. It's dangerous. Is it? Oh, why? I can tell you've got a high sex drive. You have needs. Needs that shouldn't be ignored. How do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? You're a passionate person, Beth. And if you bottle all that passion up, you just get frustrated. And then... Well, then you're easy prey for a quickie affair with the first fella that comes along. Now, that would be tragic. For you and poor Ron. I understand what you're saying. I mean, I have got needs, but... I don't want to do the dirty on Ron. I can't. So I'm stuck, aren't I? Well, not necessarily. No? There is a solution staring us in the face. A solution where you stay with the man you love, for better or worse, and satisfy your needs with your best mate. Me. Oh, well, we sleep together. Me and you. Well, you can't deny that we fancy each other like mad. Well... No one need know about it, Beth. But I'd know about it, wouldn't I? I mean, how can I face wrong now when I'm having an affair with you? But it wouldn't be like having a proper affair, would it? It'd just be like two really good mates sharing a special relationship. Everybody gets what they want, and everybody's happy. Oh, I couldn't. Not with the sacrifices that Ron's made for me. I mean, he's left his wife and kids to be with me. I know, but I'd never ask you to do that or even want you to. I'm not after some big commitment, Bev. You've already got that with Ron. I don't want to run off with you or anything. It's just a bit of fun, that's all. It's natural urges. Look, if I wasn't with Ron, I'd be in here with you like a shot. But you're not with Ron, physically. Not at the moment. And it's not fair on you. A woman of your age shouldn't have to make that kind of sacrifice. Especially when there's somebody so close who thinks so much about you. Think about it, Beth. It's the only way. <laughs> All right, draw. Who was that? Uh, just Arvo. He said I'm going to town with her tonight. Ah. I was going to ask if you come to a charity do with the Legion with me. They got a turn on. Oh, I'm sorry, love, but I said I'd go out with Avril now. Seen a lot of this Avril one lately, haven't you? Thanks, one. Well, I went for a drink with her the other night. Big deal. I thought you were just helping her to move in. Oh, I was, but we went into town for a drink afterwards. Where'd you go? Anywhere good? Um. I can't remember the name of the place. Somewhere on Cumberland Street. On the Lomax? Yeah, I'll have some on. You'd have some good bands playing there. Who was on? 
Um, I mean, I don't know. Too busy gabbing, didn't notice. Oh, I see. So you can go to this Lomax space to ignore a band, but you can't come down the Legion with me to see one. Ron, I've said I'd see Admiral now. I'm sorry. Same old story, isn't it? You'd rather spend time with your mates than with me. It's written all over your face. I'm going to start on them Christmas lights. Ron! Are you, uh, feeling all right, Bing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was just practising my interview technique. I've got a few prospective tenants coming round later. I thought it prudent to let this place out while Jean and I are abroad. Oh, well, it's a good idea to have someone living here, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to leave it empty, do you? Indeed, especially with the latest crime wave. Did you know that over the last two years, there's been a 17% increase in the number of burglaries in this area? Really? That much? Yeah. Simla, you couldn't do me an enormous favour, could you? Well, if I can be, yeah. Would you mind if I just practice my interview technique on you? Just, you know, sort of fine-tune us a little. Yeah, well, I haven't really got time to be. I'm supposed to be meeting Mick in half an hour, you know? Five minutes, if that, I promise you. <sighs> oh, go on, all right. Oh, you. spend it, spend it. You still OK for tonight? I don't know. I mean, I've told Ron I'm going to town, but you know I don't like lying to him. Well, just come round. We'll have a laugh. Oh, yeah. What else will we have? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? What about Rigsby? Julia? Don't you worry about her. Eddie, you seen me cash card around? I can't find it anyway. Uh, yeah, I've got it. Oh, right. Well, can I have a piece? Because I need to get some money out. I'll give you some. No, <laughs> you're all right. I can easily go to the cash machine later. I'd rather keep hold of your card for the time being, if you don't mind, love. Are you saying you've confiscated it? Get in, love. Now, just you hang on a minute. Look, here. Uh, there's some money to see you through the rest of the week. No chance. I'm not getting pocket money like some nosy school kids. And I'm not trusting you with our bank account. You've already blown a small fortune. Hey, can I leave your windows till tomorrow? Yeah, fine. But you can see Eddie for the money this week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, sir. Right, mate. I don't know. You've been all that money on the lottery and you're still arguing over who pays for the windows. Yep, something like that. I'll see you later, mate. Yeah, see you later, Ed. All right, Ted. Come with him. I don't know, can't say they seem any happier since the big win. Money never sold anybody problems, did it, mate? No. Listen, I need a favour. Yeah, fire away. Ted, the lonely lad is to put me crazy lights up. It's traditional, isn't it, eh? The Dixon's house covered top to bottom in lights, even for Blackpool to shave. <laughs> yeah, well, you can borrow them, but uh, don't ask me to help, please. Well, actually, I was going to ask if you could put the top ones up for us. You know, with you being used to heights. Oh, well, I am running a bit late. Anyway, I thought you were an experienced bungee jumper. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am, but, uh, but I don't want to go too mad, you know, the old ticker like. Oh, right, I see, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, all right, Mike. Well, tell you what, um, if you take it really easy, you should be all right. Besides, if you do slip, the ground will break your fall. Yeah, catch you later, though. Yeah, ta-da. Rachel! Hey. Where's Mick off to? He's not getting married, is he? Simba said that teacher's trial starts today. You know the one. Oh, he's just mixing bits over it. Yeah, I don't blame him. I could have been called as a material witness for that, you know, if the plot hadn't wiped over me video of the siege. I'd be grateful if I were you. I know, I never want to go in court again. Yeah, right. Hey, come on, you're late for work. Yeah. Mike, you still haven't said anything about the other night, you know, about a share in a flat? Yeah, well, I've been thinking about it, though. And? Well, part of me says, yeah, go for it, but then... I'm not so sure. It's a big move, you know. I know. I'm not totally certain myself, but then I just think, well, we get on dead well, and we could both do it somewhere to live. Yeah, well, it can be expensive, and then there's finance somewhere. It's not easy, you know. Yeah, but we might find somewhere. Well, I suppose there's no harm in looking. Do you think so? Yeah, but let's just take it easy, eh? Yeah, I know. But I thought if we moved in together, well, we could start a proper relationship then, couldn't we? Well, yeah. And it might finally shut up being in your dad. They'd have to take us serious then. Well, take no notice about what my dad says. He's never happy with anything I do. I'm used to that. But Bingo has been really good to me since. Oh, well, for ages now, and I'd hate to see him thinking that I was making a mistake by going out with you. Is that what he thinks, is he? Yeah, he told me last week he thought you were too old for me. I was only worrying about you. Yeah, I know, but I really would like showing that we're good for each other. And I know he really cares about me. Well, listen, we'll talk about it later, all right? Yeah, OK, see you later. See you later. All right, mate, I'm sorry I'm late. Let's get a cabby. All right. All right, where are they? I didn't know you had to be all dressed up. Do you want me to go back and get changed? Oh, no sweat. Mind you, it's not as if you're the one who's on trial, is it? Feels like it, sir. And I thought I'd make the effort. 
Show them all not some sort of scally, you know? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Bing says he can't be in court, but good luck anyway. Oh, that's nice of him, but I'd rather it was just you and me, mate. So how are you feeling? Didn't sleep a wink. Uh, well, don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. And I'll tell you what, won't be long now before she's locked up for good. Julia, Julia! What? What's up? Have you read your stars in the paper today? No, why? Is it bad news? God, no, listen. The arrival of Pisces in your star sign means good fortune will shine on you this evening. Oh, go away. No, listen. Money and travel figure prominently, and good fortune favours those who take a chance with numbers. What's all that mean? I don't know. Travel, money, numbers. Away? Oh, hey. It could mean the bingo. Oh, that's it, yeah. Away, oh, hey. I might have a win. What does that last bit say again? Good fortune favours those who take a chance with numbers tonight. Oh, that's it. I'm off to the bingo later. If we stars tell me to go. I've got to listen. Well, don't forget me if you strike it rich, will you? Hey, that one on the way to the Zachary has got a big one tonight. Big jackpot. Oh, I could do with a big win. <gasps> Mind you, if I did, I wouldn't put it all back in the bingo, not like some I could mention. Since she won on the lottery, that Rosie Banks has spent all her time in our bingo. Every time I go, she's there. Well, you get yourself along. I'll keep everything crossed for you. So, did we get the place for ourselves, didn't I? You scheming. I'm shaking like a leaf. Well, don't worry, you'll be starting soon. Just thought of sitting in the same room as that woman gives me the creeps. And she's definitely pleading not guilty. That's what I was told. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Not guilty, it's all mixed fault. Yeah, well, no one's gonna believe her, though, are they? Yeah, until they bring the therapist out, who's gonna tell everybody how Jenny was just trying to sort out our relationship problems. I just can't help thinking it'll all be beliefs. Yeah, well, just calm down. We'll just see what happens. It's all in the hands of the law now, Mr. Johnson. I'm sure I'll have my daughter back home again soon. Oh, Julia, what can I do for you? Oh, hello, David. I'm just on my dinner hour, so I thought I'd pop round and see how you're coping. I like to do a bit to help the community, you know, visiting the old and the lonely. And I've heard that you're on your own these days. Uh, Julia, that's very thoughtful of you, but I'm rather busy at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you got visitors? Uh, well, actually, I'm interviewing prospective tenants for the bungalow. I'm following Jean abroad for a while, so we've decided to let this place out. Oh, and there's me worried if you're eating properly and you're going round the world. So, where are you going first? Well, Jean's in East India at the moment, so uh, maybe they're Calcutta probably. But look, I really am frightfully busy. I must get back to it. Bye-bye. She's a ninja on her own! Oh, my God! What about the tigers? <laughs> That's the thing. She get me tight over the pension out. Hey, Ron Dixon, I want a word with you. Yes, Julia. I just want to let you know that I won't be getting any more of my messages in that shop of yours in future. Not now that I've got a lodger. Why is that, then? Your prices. And now I've got someone to take me to the supermarket, I'll be paying a lot less. Thank you very much. I oh, see. <laughs> Who's the lucky fella, then? Don't you know? Why should I? Well, I thought your Bev would have told you, seeing as how she helped move his stuff in on that. Whose stuff? Peter from our shop in Friday, I think it was. Didn't she tell you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember now, yeah. Oh, I thought you would have known. Especially with her staying so late and that. Anyway, if you start wondering why I'm not coming into your shop, you know the reason why. Ta-ra. Yeah, yeah, right. I'll see you. To this indictment, she has pleaded not guilty. No. Guilty. What's your two now? Your Honour, may I request a short break to allow me to consult my client on her change of plea? Uh, yes, by all means. Are you sure you don't want to stay for tea? No, thanks. Might be going to see another car. One of the girls in our place is selling it. And anyway, I'll have to get home and change for work tonight. No luck with any of the other cars you've seen. Nah, they're either wrecks or too much. Well, what is it you're after? 
Oh, just a little run around, something petite and reliable, and a right little girl like me. <laughs> well, I can't find this damn cash card anywhere. You gonna report it missing? No, be in the house somewhere, I'll find her. Do you need it? Well, I could do with some cash for some shopping. Don't suppose you could get any out of the account, could you? Of course, how much? About 50. No, say 80. I'll have to check it's okay with your Eddie first. Though. No, he already knows. He suggested getting it from you till we find my card. Oh, behave, I'm only messing it's your money. <laughs> I'll pick it up from you at work later if you like. No, it's all right. I'll knock around with it before I start. No chance. You're doing us a favour putting the money in your account. You shouldn't be running round after us as well. I'll meet you outside the loop before you start. Suits me. Tell you what, make it a hundred. Thank you. Mr. Crosby? Yes? I'm Lindsay Stanlow. I rang earlier about the short term tenancy. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Do come in, please. Mr. Crosby, you can have a quick word, please. Just a minute, Michael, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Miss Stanlow, if you would like to fill that in for me, mm -hmm. please. There's a chair and table on the left. I'll follow you through in a tick. Okay. Look, Michael, I'm in the middle of interviewing prospective tenants. It'll have to be quick. I'm sorry. You're not going to let them move in, are you? No, no, I don't think so. In fact, none of the applicants I've seen so far are quite uh, suitable for the close. Good. Anyway, I just wanted to have a word with you about Rachel. I know that you worry about her and that. Oh, yes, of course I do. Mrs. Crosby and I are devoted to her. And I know that you probably disprove of me and her, you know, being you know, mates. Well, I can't say no, that. No, no, it's all right. My dad's the same. He'd like to see her split up, too. I just wanted to let you know that I won't be messing her around or anything. Good. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. it. It's not just the age difference I'm concerned about. It's that Rachel needs a bit of stability in her life after all she's gone through. You must appreciate that. Yeah, I do. I mean, we're close, but it's not that serious. Right. Well... Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. Look, I'm, I must get on with the job in hand, so I'll, I'll see you in a lot. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. Uh, I think that uh, prosecution barrister did a good job on her, though, didn't he? He made her sound like the fruitcake she is. I reckon she only changed the plea to guilty, so the judge do go easy on her. I can't see that, Mr. Blah. I'll get full for that one, can you? I never know, do you? She might have to suspend its sentence. Your Honour. Although my client has changed her plea to guilty, I still feel there are mitigating circumstances to be considered. Miss Swift found it very difficult to come to terms with her guilt. And indeed, it is my opinion, it took great courage on her part to stand and admit by way of a guilty plea that she has made some grave errors and serious misjudgments. I refer mainly to the relationship she had or thought she was having with Mr. Johnson, for it's this misconception of reality which has resulted in Miss Swift appearing before you today. For she did genuinely believe that she had entered into a deep and meaningful relationship with Mr. Johnson, when in fact no such relationship had ever existed. Your Honour, before I address you any further concerning the mitigating circumstances surrounding my client's behaviour, I would like your permission to let the defendant's father speak on what could have possibly prompted her behavior and also in the matter of her conduct should she be released from custody. Uh, yes, by all Daddy gonna say sorry for her then? Well, at least she's finally admitted there's never anything between you. Uh, pity it took so long to see him. Mr. Swift, would you like to give the court your thoughts on your daughter and her recent behavior? My daughter is a kind, decent, hard-working young woman. She's a popular, conscientious school teacher, or was until she became involved with Mr. Johnson, the man people are claiming she was obsessed with. Jenny wouldn't have been capable of this kind of behavior a year ago before she met Mr. Johnson. He exerts some terrible hold over her. So I beg you, Your Honor, for the sake of our daughter, let us take her home away from the influence of this man before he ruins her life completely. Thank you. What is all this? It's my life that's been ruined. She deserves locking up. Mick, sit down. Just cool it, will you? Come on. Come on. At the moment, I'm staying with my parents. My father's a local businessman. He's in transport. And my mother's in the retail business. I've recently separated from my husband, so... so my daughter and I are staying with them just till we find somewhere suitable. Well, you are the last of the people I'd arranged to see, and I have to tell you that uh, out of all the candidates, you are the most suited to our requirements. Oh, great. So if you'll just return the completed form signed by your referees, then I'm sure I'll be in touch with you to offer you the place. Oh, smart.
passion. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. Please call me David. <laughs> Are you happy now she's pleaded guilty? I won't be happy till we get to sentence and she's locked up. We don't need a psychologist's report to tell us what's wrong with our daughter. It's you. She was going to plead not guilty until she saw you. Oh, come on, Mick. That's me. What is this hold you have over her? I've got nothing to do with your daughter. I never have. I wish I'd never met her. So how do you keep her under your spell like that? I, I could just ignore him. How can I when he comes out with rubbish like that? Yeah, well, there'll be sentence in the next week, won't they? She'll go to jail and then you'll be able to get on with your own life. Will they, though? Yes, of course they will. But what if the judge bullies off that nonsense of her half, Anna? And what about these stupid social reports? She could end up with a suspended sentence. They're gonna let her go, Sin. I know it. You've got yourself 25 points. Shouldn't you be getting ready for the league? No, it's early yet. I might be going now, anyway. No oh, way. No, that I wouldn't have taken Josh to be mum's. Where did you say you were going again? Just round to Avril's. You know, you like. If you've got a cob on with me, because I won't go to the Legion. Don't worry, you like. Right then, I will. See ya. I won't be late. What's he doing? Here? I know she's lying. She's going out to see him. Who? What are you going on about? Bev. She's seen somebody behind me back. Oh, don't talk daft. I'm not. It's that puff she works with. What, you mean Peter? Well, what makes you think that? Because she said that she was going out with her mates the other night and she wasn't. She was lying. She was with him. Oh, how do you know? Because Julia Brogan told me he lodges with her. Just because she went round there doesn't mean to say anything's going on, you know. So why did she lie? Well, you haven't exactly hidden the fact that you're not his number one fan. Maybe she thinks you'd go mad. They are mates. Yeah. Well, if they are more than mates, I'm going to find out. Where are you going? Round to Julia Brogan's to see if she is with him. Dad, if you're wrong, you're just going to make a fool of yourself. Michael, I've got to find out once and for all. Dad, hang on. I'm calling over at Mike's later, so I thought I'd give you a knock. Oh, good, good. I've got some beef madras on the go. Would you like some? Oh, no, I can smell it. Fancy a bell. I'm all right. I've eaten already, thanks. Oh, never mind. All the more for me. Always tastes better the next day anyway. Shall I make you a drink, then? No, thanks. Actually, I've called over to ask you something. Oh, really? Well, fire away. It's about the bungalow. Have you found anyone yet? Well, there is somebody in the frame, yes. Why? Do you know someone who's interested? Well, yeah, me. You? <laughs> Would you be able to afford it, Rachel? It'd be between two of us. Me and Mike are getting quite serious and we're thinking of getting a place together. Well, Michael was here today. He didn't mention it. He probably wanted to let me ask you. Gotcha. See, Michael, I told you so. I can't believe she's doing this to me. I'm with him, him of all people. Hang on a minute, Dad. All that queer stuff's just an act. He just uses that so no one suspects he's going after other fellas' women. Right. Well, I'm going to stick that airbrush up his ankle. Hang on a minute, will you? Oh, I know how it looks, but we don't know for certain what's going on, do we? Oh, yeah. Then why's she lying to me about where she's going, eh? And why's he kissing her like that? You saw it. Well, mates kiss, don't they? It doesn't mean to say anything's going on. But I tell you what, if you go charging them there, accusing them of all sorts and nothing's going on, you're going to look at right divvy, and she'll never forgive you. Look, look, they've gone into the bedroom. I don't believe it. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's showing her his new lodgings. He's showing her more than his lodgings. I'll kill her. I'll kill both of them. Okay, then. Thanks, love. Sorry, I'm late. Have you been here long? Ah, just got here. Hey. That's my taxi day's over with. I bought that car, pick it up tomorrow. Really? What is it? A metro. Look, I better get in there or I'll be for the high jump. Uh, oh, I got you your cash. Oh. Uh, what's with the uh, big agency for it tonight? I uh, I want to go shopping first thing in the morning before the crowds start. You know what it's like. Oh, true, right. So you off home now, then? Yeah, we're just going to have a quiet night in. Look, I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Thanks. All right. Ta-ra. Ta ta Taxi! Alto 
Bingo on George Street, please. Okay, love. What time is Julia back? Not until at least 11. Don't worry. Look, I don't know if I should. Oh, but it feels so right. It's the only way. What about Ron? I mean, I love him. I know you do. And it's the best thing for you, him, and me. It's perfect. I'm excited. Well, me having an affair, it'd kill him. He's given him so much for me. But he's never going to find out. You're not going to leave him. It's not like a proper affair. It's an arrangement, that's all. No. Look, I'm sorry, Peter, but I can't go through with it. I love Ron. Oh, but... Please. Look, I've made my mind up. I'll admit I was tempted, but I can't go through with it. I'm sorry, but that's all there is to it. Could we go downstairs, please? Yeah, OK. That's what you want. <sighs> the light's gone off. I can't stand this. I'm going in. Dad, don't. I can't believe it. How could she? I gave up everything to be with her. I just feel so... Come on, Abe. Let's go on. I've been a stupid owl fool, Michael. But I'm not going to let this lie. I'm going to get proper proof. And when I do... Be mad. So where did you and this Avril go to last night, then? Well, we were supposed to just be going to the Sefton, but she dragged me onto the Montreux afterwards. Didn't want to go. And will you be seeing her again tonight, like? No, I thought me and you would have a nice night in together for a change. Huh? Avril must be busy, then, eh? Don't be like that. Just fancy a night in with me fella, that's all. Oh, well, they do say a change is as good as a rest. I wish you'd take me seriously. Yeah, well, I would. If you stuck to your word. OK, then. I'll prove to you I am serious. Just how do you intend to do that? I want us to get married. Married? Like what's brought this on? I want to be a Dixon. I want me, you and Josh to be a proper family. Well, you do surprise me. I want it all official. I want a church do, bridesmaids, horse and carriage, the full works. Bev, we've spoken about this before, haven't we? And you know that it's impossible. Why not? Well, it's a small matter to that woman, Dee Dee, isn't it? You know, the one I've been married to for the last 22 years. All right, Sally Sarcasm. No need to talk to me like I'm stupid. Well, you know that she'd never give me a divorce. It's impossible. It's against her religion. Smiling's against her religion. She wants everyone else to be unhappy just because she's a miserable cow. Look, I've got to get off to work. I'll see you later. What did she have to say for herself? Well, son, the plot thickens. How do you mean? She's just asked me to marry her. What? Can't believe a bloody word that comes out of her mouth anymore. 
Should have heard her going on about this Avril one she was supposed to be out with last night. She sounded that convincing, I almost believed her. Well, we both know she wasn't with Avril. I don't know what I'm gonna do, you know, son. Can't bear to be in the same room as her at the moment. I just can't believe that she could be such a conniving little... We haven't got any real proof, Dad. As I say, her and Peter might just be mates. Oh, yeah, and there's a pig flying past the back kitchen window. I can see right through this marriage crap and all. How do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? She's just after me money. She sees me as nothing more than one big stupid sugar daddy. She just wants us to get married, though she can run off with the queer fella and take half of everything I own with her. Just take it easy, Dad. Don't get so wound up. Your mother would have loved this, wouldn't she? Bet she's been praying for the last couple of years for something like this to happen. Michael, you've got to promise me that you won't breathe a word of this to anybody, do you? I say if I would. I just need to catch the matty. I need real proof. And when I do get it, they'll be nothing down for the pair of them, believe me. How's it going? Good. How's all this? I've already told you. So I'm in the business and moving away from here. And where will you go? I don't know. Anywhere safe for the minute. Well, there's no prices for guessing what's brought this on. Look, it's killing me not knowing what's going to happen to her. She could be walking free this time next week. And if she is, I can't afford to stay around here. This way it gives us a head start. Brief word with you, please. It's not about Rachel again, is it? Look, I'll appreciate you'll probably tell me this is none of my business, but as I have more or less officially been appointed as Rachel's guardian, I really do feel that I must vocalize my concerns. And what concerns are these? Well, to come straight to the point, I was most alarmed to discover yesterday that after only a transitory courtship, you are already seeking communal living quarters. You were? Rachel inquired yesterday as to the possibility of you and her moving in together in the bungalow during my absence. <laughs> That's the first I've heard. Michael, if you are grown up enough to contemplate moving in with her, then at least have the decency to be a man and be truthful with me. I swear I am being truthful. That's just as well, then. Because for your information, I have already found the perfect tenant. Well, thanks for letting me know. But I never had any intention of moving in there in the first place. On my own, or with Rachel. I'll see you later. Hi, love. Hi. Hi, Dave. I believe you finally found your new tenant, then. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, absolutely charming young lady with impeccable manners. Uh, uh, do you mind my asking how you know? Oh, she told me, love. Don't worry. You'll have no problems with her. She's no Scally or Lindsay, you know. We sent her to elocution lessons when she was seven, and most people are shocked. You know, when they actually find out that she's from Liverpool, they automatically assume she's from the Wirral. <laughs> do, do you mean to tell me that Lindsay Stanlow is a relative of yours? She's more than that, love. She's my daughter, didn't you know? No, no, she didn't mention anything. Well, oh, she must be ashamed of us. <laughs> anyway, listen, Dave, I just want to say, you know, on behalf for me and Jimmy, thanks very much. This is just what our Lindsay needs. You know, a piece of space, like, to clear her head, away from that no-mark husband of his. No-mark husband? Oh, no, 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 she's well shut of him now. I never understood what she saw in him in the first place, you know. And listen, at least you don't have to worry about her throwing any wild parties over there, cos me and Jimmy will be in and out of that place, you know, keeping an eye on it for you. Well, actually, uh, I, I, I'm afraid that there's been a bit of an oversight on the administration side of things. I've, I've uh, just remembered, actually, I, I can't offer the tenancy to your daughter after all. You are? Look, I know you'll probably think this is most unprofessional of me, but um, I had no choice, you see. I've, um, I've had to offer the bungalow to a, a bereaved friend of mine from the uh, Over 55s Club. But you were made up with our Lindsay two minutes ago. Until you found out she was related to us, that is. No, no, that's simply not true. You're, uh, you're putting words into my mouth. Oh, you'll be telling me I've got a chip on my shoulder next. Well, listen. You can take your bungalow and you can shove it. Our Lindsay would rather live in a cardboard box than pay rent to a stuck-up get like you. Hello. Thanks. You've been very subdued today, Mrs. Overall. Mrs. O? You know, Mrs. Overall, she choked to death on one of her own macaroons. You joking? Was she one of the regulars? No, she's from the telly, you dozy cow. Julie Walters. Julie Walters is dead. Oh, forget it. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Oh, I'm fuming. 
Why, what's up? That David Crosby one, that's what's up. What's he doing? He only told our Lindsay she could move into his bungalow. Now he's found out she's a cook, and he doesn't want to know. Go away. Can you believe this? Oh, we come out with some other pathetic excuse, you know, but I can see right through them. We're obviously too common for the likes of him. So now I've got to go and phone our Lindsay. Break the news to her. Everyone seems really fed up today. Must be something in the air. Oh, you should have seen the gob Ron had on him last night. Why did he give you a hard time? Well, I can't blame him. I mean, I'd go mad if he was out all the time. I thought you'd be made up. Look, this is no joke, Peter. I really meant what I said last night. I really love Ron. There's no way I'd be unfaithful to him. I mean it. We just got carried away. I know I led you on, and I'm sorry about that, but well, the top and bottom of it is that I'm just not interested in you in that way. So this is why you've been funny with me all day? I'm not being funny with you. I just feel like I write biff after everything that happened. Look, I'll admit I'm disappointed. You know how much I like you. But all this doesn't mean we've got to stop being mates, does it? If that's what you want. Of course it is. I'm glad. Get on better with you than I do most girls. There's probably a good explanation for that. How do you read? Well, I've never actually told this to anyone before, but I was actually christened Petra Feeling. I had a sex change when I was 17. Mm, we should sue them then, shouldn't you? Or at least get your money back, because they made a right mess of you. Oh, very quick today, aren't we? Been popping the slimming pills, have you? Yeah, what would I need the slimming pills for? I'm virtually borderline anorexic. Oh, yeah, and I'm Kate Moss's skinny sister. I'm glad we're mates again. So am I. It's better than not, isn't it? Should get back to work, then. Oh, hello, love. Uh, come in. Thanks. Michael! Your young lady friend is here. Go on through, love. Sit down. He'll be down in a sec. Well, <laughs> you two seem to be seeing a lot of each other lately. Yeah, I suppose we are. Funny, you know, I always thought you were caught in that young Banks lad. I mean, he is more your age, isn't he? Oh, he might be the same age, but he's quite immature, really. I think most lads usually are at that age. Ah. So you prefer older men, do you? Yes, yeah, so it's just as well you dick some men prefer young women, isn't it? All right. Yeah. Right, well, I'll get off. Leave you to it. You fancy a cup of tea or something? No, thanks. I'm not stopping. I've got to get into town. I'm Christmas shopping. Oh, OK. Well, I'll go and feed our KF then. <sighs> Your guardian angel had a go at me before. Who? Bing, who do you think? What did he say? Well, he seemed to have this idea that me and you were moving in the bungalow together. Don't take me the wrong way. I hope you don't think I'm getting all heavy. I just thought it'd be a laugh. Yeah, I'm sure it would be, but I couldn't move anyway. I mean, I'm only stuck here because I can't afford a place of my own. I'm broke, aren't I? So you're not mad at me, then? No, of course not. So what are you shopping for, anyway? Never you mind. Oh, so does that mean I'm getting something? I do, if you're lucky. Well, listen, if you're stuck for ideas, I wouldn't mind a new stereo. Can you get them in 50 pence shops? Oh, splashing out on me, are you? Mick, you can't let her get to you like this. And this place is yours and the kids' home. It's your business. You can't just pack it all in and leave it behind. Oh, yeah, I can. Just watch me. But Jenny could get sent down for years. I mean, then you'll have done all this for nothing. Listen, but I'm not taking any risks. I wanted to go down for a long, long time, but there's no guarantee of that. We all know what the legal system's like in this country. Just look what it did to Mandy and Beth. The woman is sick. She needs help. Proper psychiatric help. They won't let her go. I wouldn't be too sure about that. There's all sorts roaming the streets these days. Care in the community, isn't that what they call it? Anyway, it's not for me to worry about. The only thing I'm interested in is getting me and the kids as far away from here as possible. What'd you keep staring out the window for? I thought Bev would have been back by now. She's probably slipped off on another dangerous liaison with piece of the Puff. She's been working. She'll be back in a minute. You should take your mind off this. Why don't we start putting the Christmas decorations up in here, eh? Look, it's nearly half past. It doesn't take this long to get home. It's only five minutes through that pathway. Dad, take it easy, eh? Take it easy? I just found out that me woman's carrying home at Liverpool's answer to Larry Grayson, and you're saying take it easy? We don't know that for sure. In the meantime, you've got to give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm going round there. Dad, eh? you can't keep following her everywhere. You're going to make her suspicious. Well, it's cracking me up doing nothing. All kinds running through me head. Sorry I'm late. Got gaffed to Jackie Corkill in the shop. I thought you'd left the country or something. Oh, you still sulking with me? I thought you'd have been back ages ago. I was starting to get worried. I'm sorry, I just didn't think. No, you never do, do you? What's that supposed to mean? Ah, forget it. I don't believe you. 
I've only just got in from work and you're already having a go at me. I never would have gone out with Avril if I'd known you'd carry on like this. Avril, my bloody eye. Harlot. I'm waiting for a new cash card to come through. I don't know how you get through it all. I only gave you 100 quid yesterday. I could live on that for two months. Oh, don't exaggerate. Have you been Christmas shopping lately? Seen the price of things? You know what it's like. Money goes nowhere these days. And don't you want a good crimbo prezzy? Yeah. Well, I just don't want Eddie kicking off on me when he finds out there's not left in the account. Well, it won't come to that, will it? Won't it? I think it was going out of fashion the way you're throwing it away. Oh, no, just change the record, will you? You're putting years on me. All I want is a bit of cash so I can get the rest of me Christmas shopping. That's what money's for, spending. Now, can we go? Ron, why are you being like this with me? I'm not being like anything. You are. You're being dead cold with me. Look, I said I was sorry about last night. What else can I do, eh? Why don't you forgive me? Don't go on, eh, Bev? Just want a bit of peace and quiet, that's all. I hate it when we fall out. Look, why don't we have a nice night in together tonight, eh? We could watch some telly and have an early night. What'd you say? Yeah, well, you can have a nice night in, can't you? Because I might be going out later, down the Legion. And if I do go, don't be asking me what time I'll be back. Because I don't know, OK? I'll get straight off. I can walk home from here. You sure? Yeah. I'm just going to nip in here for a magazine. Oh, all right, then. I'll probably see you tomorrow. And thanks for getting that money for us. Must be a real pain for you. It doesn't bother me. I'm just not sure why you'd ask me to mind it in the first place when you keep breaking into it all the time. Well, it's just until my new cash card comes through. Yeah, if you say so. Look, I tell you what. Save us hassling you all the time. Why don't you let me have your cash card? Me and Ed can make withdrawals without having to drag you down there. Well... Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? And it is our money. It's only in there so the legal aid won't find out. And you still have the interest. Oh, all right, then. I haven't got a carrot in there anyway. Are you sure Eddie won't mind? It, well, it was his idea, actually. Oh, all right. Save me a journey, anyway. Mm. Look, I'll write the numbers down. Oh, it's OK, I know it. Right, I'll see you later, sis. Thanks again. See ya. Hello. Just this, please, look. Ten. Thanks. Actually, look, can we take the five scratch cards out of that and all? Yeah, sure. Oh, look, make it ten. <sighs> They're awful addictive, these things, aren't they? Yeah. But I'm feeling lucky. There you go. Ta. Lovely. See ya. Ta da. All right, Bing. How's it going? Oh, so-so. Still searching for a suitable tenant to let the bungalow to. I was rather hoping to have found somebody by now. Time's running out, you see. Jean makes her next move soon. Well, it's your own fault, mate. Jackie Corkill told me about you binning off there, Lindsay, and she's still on the warpad, so I'd watch out if I were you. I merely tried to explain to Jackie that all I wanted was a more mature tenant, and she took it the wrong way. Would you be interested in the place? Well, I'm not sure. But I know a man who might be. Really? Who? All right, Rosie. I uh, just nearly had an heart attack. How come? Cool. Well, I just bought a couple of these from the garage. I had two twenty-five thousand on that one. Then when I scratched off the last number, I saw another twenty-five. But then I realised it was only twenty-five quid. You see, that's why they call them art stoppers. Oh my God, they're just a big car. Yeah, but people do win on them now. Doesn't necessarily lead to happiness, though, does it? Yeah, well, that's all sorted now, isn't it? Yeah, well, I still think the odds are too long. Anyway, I thought you'd had a few bob. Now, what are you wasting your time with them for? Well, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? And you'd soon change your tune if you won another 50,000. <laughs> I'll see you. Yeah, see ya. Yeah, some people are not satisfied, are they? See you later. Oh, are you sure your dad don't mind us sitting up here? I told you it's got nothing to do with him. I feel bad about us being up here, though. Very exciting, is it? I haven't even got enough money to take you out. Oh, I'm happy just sitting up here.
Come in. Hiya. I brought you up a nice cuppa. It is two sugars for you, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Thought it was. There you go. Right, now, do you fancy having the gilts? A butty or something? No, thanks, Dad. We're all right. Listen, don't think you've got to hide away up here, you know. You're more than welcome to come and sit downstairs and watch the telly. We've got satellite. You're all right sitting up here listening to music. Anyway, I thought you were going to Legion. Yeah, 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 I am. Later. Loads of time, yeah. <laughs> right, well, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it then. <laughs> I've got a minute's peace in this house. See what I mean? Mike, is it all right if I come in? Yeah. Sorry to disturb you, love beds, but you haven't seen me purse anywhere, have you? I haven't. Oh, I can't find it anywhere. I'm sure I had it. I'll go mad if I've lost it. It had about 40 quid in. Sorry, I can't help you. Oh, well, sorry to disturb you anyway. We'd have more peace if we spent the night on the hard shoulder, the M62. Well, I think Jack and Katie might be going out tomorrow, so we might be able to have the sound flat to ourselves. That'd make a nice change. Yeah, we've never really been on our own together. You know, like, properly. Um, no. Well, hopefully we will tomorrow. I'll sort it out with the others. Yeah, OK. I don't believe this. What? Anybody want to use the bog before I get in the bath? No, thanks. No, thanks, Dad. You're all right. Right. Well, I just thought I'd better ask. <sighs> I don't believe this house. It's like living in the middle of the Queen Vic. Well, hopefully this time tomorrow night we'll have the flat to ourselves. Yeah, I look forward to it. Me too. What are you doing here? Uh, was it? Oh, it's all right. It's just the milkman. I've got the money to pay him. We left this in the salon. Oh, thank God for that. Thought I'd lost it. Look, you shouldn't come round here, though. You know what Ron's like. He'd have kittens if he knew you were knocking for me. Where is he now? He's in the bath. So you're right to talk for a minute? Well, a minute, but I'm well, not here, eh? I'm going to go berserk if he saw you. Where, then? Follow me. Hiya. Hiya. Have one twenty-five pound on that, love. Oh. In fact, just give us 15 in cash and another 10 cards, please. All right. Still feeling lucky. <laughs> so, Why are you wasting your money on more? <coughs> you won't be saying that if I win 50 grand. I think you've had all your luck for this year, haven't you? I thought the idea of gambling was to quit while you're ahead. Oh, don't you be so cynical. I'm not being cynical, I'm being sensible. Oh, I take it you won't want half then if I win the big one. And another thing, not a word of this to your father, you know what he's like. Here, take that. Get something down the chippy for yourself. Keep the rest. I'm off to meet my mates down the bingo. Good luck. Talon. Oh, this is very strange, isn't it? Hiding in the garage. If anyone saw us now, they'd be forgiven for thinking we were having enough food. Oh, if one saw you there, I'd have the last of it. Has he still been a bit funny with you? I can't really blame him for not talking to me. I've hardly spent any time with him the last couple of months. I want to make things up to him, though. And how do you plan to do that? I want to prove I can change. I'm even thinking of looking for a new job. I don't like the idea of him working all the time. Not with his health and everything. And I wouldn't mind being the breadwinner for a change, learning a proper trade, even going to a college a couple of days a week. How much you fancy doing? Don't know. Something that makes me decent money, but I haven't got any qualifications, have I? Besides, if something did happen to Ron, what would me and Josh do? I can't cope with the money I get from cleaning. Not unless I was signing on and all. Besides, I don't want to be cleaning for the rest of my life. Have you ever considered doing hairdressing? Why? Do you think I'd be any good? Well, you spend enough time in this salon. You'd be surprised by how much you've probably already taken in without even realising it. Do you reckon? Hmm. I can just see you with your own chain of salons. Do you really think so? Oh, don't you have to go to college and all that, though? Well, yeah, but I can be your personal tutor. Oh, and don't worry, I won't try anything on again. I'm sure you'd make a brilliant apprentice. I bet you'd pick it up in no time. Do you reckon? I'm positive. OK, then. When do we start? Oh, didn't take you long to make a decision, did it? You know me. Don't like wasting time. Um, one thing, though, Peter. What? Don't tell anyone. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I just want to find out if I'm good at it first. You know, surprise people. Show people there's more to me than meets the eye. Hi, right, Mick. Oh, so you're still keeping the place running, then? 
won't keep here until I find someone else, am I? Well, I might have found a solution to some of your problems. How do you mean? I've just had a bit of a chat with Bing on your behalf, and he's looking to put somebody in the bungalow for a few months. The bungalow on the close? You are joking, are you? Why, what's up, Rick? You've got a short memory, haven't you? My marriage broke up there. The place was repossessed by the building society. What makes you think I'd want to go back there? Well, I just thought it would have been ideal while you were sorting yourself out with somebody else. No, no way, Sin. There's too many bad memories in that place. Thanks for asking on that, Paul. Yeah, well, it was worth it, I suppose. But if you want my honest opinion, I think you're mad for even considering moving. You've got good friends around here. I mean, mad these gone. I don't want you to go as well, you know. I mean... Look, I'm sorry, mate, but I'd be mad if I stayed around here. Especially if they let Looney Tunes out next week. Yeah, but it doesn't matter where you're gonna live. And if she wants to find you, then she'll find you. Oh, thanks a lot. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Well, it's true, isn't it? Listen, son. I read in the paper before that a woman hung herself while she was on remand. Now, I know this sounds terrible, but I was gutted when I read the name and it wasn't Jenny. Oh, I really believe that's the only way I'm ever going to be free of it. God forgive me for saying that, but that's how I feel, son. Look, I understand how you feel, but you're going to do no good moving, are you? I mean, your friends are here, your kids are settled in the school. You... Don't you think I've considered all that? Look, you can say what you want. I'm selling the business and I'm moving on. I just want to be as far away from this place and that moment as possible. Next tonight, unbounded luxury, the QE2 to New York and Concord back to London. That's the real holiday show. Follow her everywhere she goes. You just need to bide your time. Michael, I've got to do something. I feel like I'm cracking up with all this. Going into work when it's supposed to be a day off. I reckon she's going to meet him. She's only going to work. Why didn't you just ask her? Because I can't. She's such a good liar. Where are you going? I, um... I was just going to see Eddie. Looks like he's getting a flat tyre. <laughs> Looks all right to me. Uh, oh, I've left my keys on the fireplace. Here, here. Take mine. No, oh, ta. Don't want to be late again. See ya. <laughs> Suspicious if you carry on like this. Yeah, well, I'll be going round to the shop in a bit, so I'll be able to check if she's actually where she says she's going to be. Oh, hey, hey, Sin. The rest of my staff, are you? Well, as a matter of fact, just reorganising your life for you. What are you planning now? Well, we think we've come up with the perfect solution to all your problems. Oh, please tell me. I could do with some advice. Well, you're looking for somewhere to live, right? Right. Somewhere a bit bigger. Where the kids can have a room each, nice gardens front and back, but you don't want to move too far from any of your mates. Well... And I'm looking for something a bit smaller, say, a nice little two-bedroom flat. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, well, you two exchange. You and the kids in that lovely big house on the close. And me and Rebecca are upstairs. It'll be really handy for work. As simple as that. Yeah, well, that way you get to move into your new home and you'll be able to carry on running the business as well. Yeah, but Simba, it's only around the corner. The whole idea of moving is to get away from here. Well, that's what's so perfect about this plan. See, Jenny will never dream that you've moved so close. That all sounds very nice, but I couldn't afford a big house like that. Not if I decide to keep this place going. Well, I've got that one sorted out as well. Got another little surprise, have you? Well, who else is looking for somewhere to live? You busy, mate? Now, I'll go have some of the rent and all the bills and everything. I mean, it's a four-bedroom house, after all, there's plenty of room. Okay, so you'd have a living babysitter as well. I didn't say that, you, but I'd make a good guard dog, though. Are you serious? Michael, have you ever known me to be anything else? Sounds like an offer too good to refuse to me. And you'd be a lot better off than you are now. What are you two liking? Scheming behind me back? 
Well, it's because we love you. And we'd be devastated if you moved off and left us behind. So, what do you reckon? Yeah, well, what about this deal, fella? Won't he ever say in all this? Oh, he'd just be made up to have new tenants. Apparently, he's back at the weekend, so we could sort it out with him there. <sighs> well, all right. If he agrees, I'm game. Straight up. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather rent anyway. Never want another mortgage again after the last fiasco. Two grand! Who's this Sean Brooks then? Oh, it's just some fella that borrowed the money from to open this place. I promised I'd pay it back as soon as I could afford it. I wish someone had sent me a cheque for £2,000 out of the blue. And you know what? I think I'll have it blown up and put on the wall to remind myself how I got started. You know, once I'm a millionaire. <laughs> oh, on second thought, I'd better not. It might upset some mozzy. How do you mean? Oh, it's a long story. Just don't ask Casey about it. Boost for a cup of tea? Oh, yeah, please. Hang on, I'll give you a hand. I dug out my old girls with her last night. You can practice on it. I used to have one of them. Well, it's not a real girl's world. It's just an old hairdressing dummy. Well, I did ask me mum for a girl's world one Christmas. Did she get you? No, she made me an appointment with a child therapist instead. She didn't. Oh, I'm only messing. I think I ended up with an action man or something. All right, Dad. Hiya, love. Is, um... Bev around? Yeah, she's just in the back with Peter. Bev? Come on, I'll do this. Oh, hi, hon. What are you doing here? Uh, I just popped in to let you know that your mum's been on the phone and she said, could you ring her back after? She sound all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's fine. Just wanted a natter, that's all. All right. <laughs> so I thought that I'd better let you know now in case I forgot later on. How are you, Mr T? How are you? Puss and grumble, you know. Right, well, I'll get on, leave you to it. Yeah, see you, Dad. Oh. Bev, is my dad all right? Yeah, why shouldn't he be? I don't know, we just seem to be acting a bit strange, that's all. You heading back to the close, Michael? Yeah. Oh, hop in, I'll give you a lift. Ah, oh, cheers, Mr Crosby. You all right, Tommy? Yeah. Sounds a bit low there, you know, mate. Oh, blast. Suppose I better see to it, there's a foot pump in the back. Driving with the incorrect tyre pressure could be lethal. Well, that's it for you if you want. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. So, been anywhere interesting? Only job centre. Wasted time. So, can you drive in Max's car then? Oh, I've garaged the Cortina in preparation for my trip abroad. Patricia asked me to pick up Thomas and his thing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say go to a car like this. Yeah. Actually, I'm rather glad I bumped into you. Gives us a chance to have a bit of a chat, you know, man to man. What about? Oh. Things in general, you know. Will you be seeing Rachel today? Yeah, I'll be seeing her later. Michael, look, I know that you've told me that this isn't a serious relationship between the two of you, but I'm afraid that Rachel seems to think there's more in it than that. Does she? I know your intentions are honourable, but it's just that, as you know, I'm incredibly fond of Rachel, and I can't help feeling protective towards her. I hate to see her get hurt again. Well, I don't intend hurting her. No, I, I'm sure you don't. All that I'm saying is that if you intend going on with this friendship, it's absolutely vital that Rachel isn't under any false impression. You see, she's had a very disturbed childhood, and that can manifest itself in some very peculiar ways. It's quite possible that she feels almost obliged to offer you more than just friendship, when really all she needs is a friend. She's a very mixed-up girl, Michael. You, you have to be so careful. Saved you the journey then, haven't I? Thought I could catch a lift into town. We could grab a coffee, eh? My trees. More shopping. It's like it's going out of fashion. Oh, well, if you don't want me to treat me, sister. Man, I still haven't got anything for Rebecca or our Lee yet. You should see the size of his Christmas list. Look, Rose, I'm not being funny, like, but you want to slow down a bit on the aisle spending? I know you're tough for a few, Bob, but you're already down to a few thousand. You'll have nothing left at this rate. Mm, well, if you're going to be like that, I'll go on my own. And I think I should have my cash card back. Well, don't you trust me or something? Actually, no, I don't. And I don't believe for one minute you've been spending all this money on Christmas presents. Why not? Because I've seen the way you threw your dosh around at the bin gap, and then in the intervals you never off the fruit machines. You're like a woman possessed. Oh, come off it. Just be honest with me. You've blown a fortune and now you're trying to win it back, aren't you? 
See, I'm not as soft as I look, am I? I'm starting to think I'll never be able to drive. I've got my third test coming up next week. The key is, Michael, not to panic. Just enjoy it. <laughs> That's easier said than done. Of course, driving's a lot more dangerous these days than so many idiots on the road. Actually, I'm pretty certain there's not many drivers can boast a track record like mine. Do you know, Michael, that I've been driving for 40 years? Over 40 years? And in that time, I've never had a single accident. Not so much as a minor scraping. Well, that's quite an achievement, I suppose. <laughs> Say that again. Of course, statistically, it's proven that most accidents are caused by inexperienced and younger drivers anyway. Usually males in their early 20s. Really? Personally, I'm all in favour of making the test more difficult. <sighs> oh, don't be wishing that on me. If you make it even harder, I'll never pass. <laughs> oh, come on, Mo. Don't be like this. I don't want to fall out with you. I'm just saying it for your own good. Keep the cash card, spend the money, see if I care. So can I have a lift then? Come on, get in, as you're my sister. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> Where's Simba? Hey, it's you! <laughs> what the hell is she playing at? You just seem to come from nowhere. I don't believe this. You weren't even looking. <sighs> oh, dear. Come on, son. Come on. We better go and face the music. Dave, I'm awful sorry I was miles away. Are you all right? No, I'm not. We're just back straight in front of him there. And have you passed your test? There's been a crash. Oh, my God. Oh, no-one's been killed. Is it badly damaged, Dave? Well, you can see for yourself. There's a hell of a dent and the headlights smashed. Your car looks all right, Mo. Oh, nice one, Mo. You haven't even got a scratch. How on earth am I going to explain this to Max? He'll think I'm a total incompetent. It's the first time he's ever deigned to trust me with his car. So no-one's been injured, then? Fortunately not, but it could have been much worse. How did it happen? It was my fault. I waved to Simbad and next thing I knew... I wouldn't be admitting to anything if I were you, Mo. Not until it's been proven, anyway. Oh, you, Tommy, you're all right. Hey, did you get a fright? Women drivers, eh? <laughs> right, we'd better exchange insurance details, then. Bet you'd cost a fortune to get that fixed. Yeah, all right, all right, no need to rub it in. What are you saying? Hard luck, Mr Crosby. There goes that excellent track record you were just telling me about. Hey, Michael, don't you be so smug. You're the one who can't pass this test, remember? Yes, yeah, so everyone keeps telling me. Sinbad, we may need to call upon you at some point. You were an independent witness. Oh, don't look at me, mate. I'm just an innocent bystander. Hey, my mum was a witness and all, weren't you, love? Yeah, yeah. Saw the whole thing from the window. Right, then. Let's get all this official business out of the way. Actually, Dave, seeing as there's not too much damage to Max's car, it'd probably be better if we sorted it between ourselves. Oh, I don't know about that. You are supposed to report an accident, and who knows how much all this is actually going to cost. Oh, don't worry. I won't leave the country or anything. I'll pay to get it all fixed up. I just don't want to lose me no claims bonus, you see. Well, all right, if that's what you really want, but I'm, I'm not totally happy about it. Oh, it'll be all right so long as we get Max's car fixed up. That's all that matters, isn't it? Right, we better get these cars off the road. Don't want to cause any more chaos. There'll be murder when Max finds out. Come on, babe. Are you sure you wouldn't be better off sorting it through the insurance? Absolutely positive. Well, I'll be certain, because I haven't got any average. Oh, please, tell me you're joking. I wish I could. I don't believe this. Neither do I. Oh dear, I don't think Max is going to be too pleased when he sees this little lot. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he won't be. Anyway, I booked it in for repair, so hopefully it'll look as good as new again in a couple of days. Well, let's hope so, eh? Uh, actually, Bing, I've come round to see you about Mick Johnson renting the bungalow. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, uh, I'm afraid he's had a better offer, mate. Really? Yeah. He's not going to be a lodger now, he's uh, going to be your next door neighbour. You don't mind still running me into town, do you? I shouldn't even be leaving the house. I'm still in a state of shock. Oh, you'll be all right once you get back behind the wheel, love. I remember what I said before, that I'm not being a part of all your spending activities. Oh, change the record, will you? Come on. Oh, Maureen, just to let you know, I should have an estimate for you by the beginning of next week. 
Looks as if it might be rather costly, though, I'm afraid. Are you quite sure you don't want to contact your insurance company? Positive. Right, I'll be in touch then. There goes my Christmas savings. Come on. Hey, why don't me and you go out tonight, eh? I can all Linda babysit Josh or me. Nah, not in the mood. You're not feeling well? Hey, it's not your angina, is it? No, I'm fine. So then what's up? You're not still sulking with me because I went out with Avril the other night, are you? Look, I just fancy a night in, that's all, OK. I can't handle two every nights out in a trot. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, you know. I know it sounds terrible, but I couldn't help laughing. He was being dead smug about never once having a crash. Next thing, Mo's car comes back and out from nowhere straight in front of him. He went slap bang into the lamppost. <laughs> I can just imagine what his face must have been like. I wish I'd been there. It was a picture, I'm telling you. Bet Max will go for Do you think that'll be? Oh, just ignore it. It'll probably just be someone for Jackie or Katie. I never get any visitors. Feels that weird us being here alone, doesn't it? I keep thinking one of them are going to barge in. Well, there's no need to worry. They're both out all night, so we've got a place to ourselves. Ron, hmm? have you made a will? What brought that on? I know it's a strange thing to ask, and don't take it the wrong way, but I was just thinking about me and you not being able to get married for a couple of years, and well, I was just worrying that if something did happen to you, what would happen to me and Josh? I mean, God forbid, like, but just in case. And what makes you think that anything is going to happen to me? I'm not saying it will. I mean, touch wood, you've got years left in you yet, but if the worst did come to the worst, what would happen to me and Josh? And people say you've got to be sensible about these things. And the way things stand, do you, do you get everything? Well, she's still officially your next of kin, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, I suppose she is. So in that case, maybe it would be sensible to consider making a will. Just to be on the safe side, like, secure Josh's future. You wouldn't want to see us out on the streets, would you? Yeah, yeah, OK, I'll look into it. I know it sounds morbid, but it's just one of those things you've got to consider, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You say so. Oh, hello, Bing, come in. Ron, I don't suppose Rachel's with you, is she? I just called round to the flat and there was no reply. No, mate, uh, our mic went round to hers before, said they were having a night in. Oh. Well, they're obviously ignoring me, then. Heaven knows what they might be getting up to. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry, mate. Our Mike's the gentleman he wouldn't take advantage of. Her. Let's be realistic, Ron. He's a young man in his early 20s. It doesn't take a genius to work out what he's after. I'm not happy about this at all. Hey, just hang on a minute, Bing. If anybody's got anything to worry about here, I think it might be me. Our Michael will probably be the one who ends up getting his fingers burnt. I've warned them to steer well clear of that Jordash family. They've caused them enough hassle already. Rachel is my responsibility. Can't you understand that? I don't want to see her coming to any harm. Well, I can assure you that she won't. Our oh, Michael's a decent lad. Too decent for his own good sometimes. I just don't like the idea of anyone taking advantage of her. Hey, if I know that George Ashlot, it'll be her taking advantage of him. One cross word, he could end up with a knife in his back. <laughs> well, if that's your attitude, there's no point in discussing it, is there? Good night. What's going on? I'm going for a walk. Ron, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I just want to go for a walk. That's allowed, isn't it? Are you sure you want to go through with this? Why, don't you? I'm asking you. I thought it was what you wanted. But what do you want? I just want whatever makes you happy. Well, we don't have to have sex if you don't want to. Why? Oh, you fancy me or something? No, it's got nothing to do with that. It's just... Well, you must admit, this is all a bit odd, isn't it? I can't help thinking we've rushed into things a little bit. Do you reckon? Don't get me wrong, but... Up until a few weeks ago, I'd always thought of you as Beth's baby sister. And now here we are together. I mean, would you still be here if Beth was alive? Being realistic, we probably wouldn't, would we? I suppose we just needed a bit of support. 
I don't know how we got into this situation. So, what are you trying to say? You don't want to see me anymore? No, no, not at all. Look, don't take this the wrong way, but I know what you've been through. and I know that I'm the first guy that you've been out with, really. I just think that you should be absolutely certain before you decide to sleep with me or anybody else. I wouldn't like to think that you felt pressured into doing it. You were doing it for all the wrong reasons. And what are they? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Maybe we're both trying to find a replacement for better in our lives. Have you ever considered that? Yeah, I suppose I have, really. I just knew how much Beth liked you um, when she died. I felt as though I wanted to get to know you, find out all the things I never knew about her. Well, yeah, I can understand that. But that doesn't mean to say we have to go out with each other. Maybe we should put things on hold for a bit. Just be mates, eh? To be honest, I suppose that's all I ever wanted, really, just someone to talk to. I only thought you'd be interested in me if I was your girlfriend. I didn't think you'd want me just as a friend. <laughs> oh, no, don't be soft. No, no, that's after the one thing, you know. I suppose we're both on the rebound in a way. God, I feel really stupid now. That makes two of us then. So, just mates then. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think it's for the best, really. It's obvious neither of us are over Beth yet. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Well, in that case, how do you fancy ordering some pizza, going to watch a film or something? My treat. Yeah, I'd really like that. And Rachel. If I need someone to talk to, or a shoulder to cry on, I'll be here for you, you know that. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate that. Right, should we get going then? I suppose we better tidy ourselves up a bit first. <laughs> Give us a hug. All right, Mick. How are things? Oh, all right. Hey, listen, Ron, uh, have you heard we could be neighbours soon? How do you mean? Well, Simba would mean the kids are moving into Barry's house on the close. I've arranged an exchange with Sarah Banks, who's looking for somewhere small, you know. Oh, nice one. So, can I get you anything? No, no, I was just passing, thought I'd pop in, see how you were, that's all. See ya. Yeah, see you, Ron. Listen, mate, any chance of getting some pizzas on tick? Don't get me gyro till tomorrow. Your old fella's just feeling him. Why don't tap him? Which way did he go? Uh, towards the movie, I think. Oh, all right, I'll go and find him then. I'm sure he won't mind lending his favourite son a tenner. <laughs> Hello, Adam. I won't be a mate. All right, what can I get you? Dad, what's wrong? What are you doing sitting in here? I've been a complete fool, Michael. Why, what's happened? It's Bev. What do you think? What now? Just before, totally out of the blue, she started asking me about me will. Saying that she just saw something out. Leave everything to her and Josh. Well, what's brought all that on? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? This just proves to me that she is carrying on with that Peter fella. And she's obviously just making sure that everything's going to be signed over into her name before she gets shot at me. What, like a double indemnity, you mean? That's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Your mother was right all along. She always warned me that something like this could happen. <laughs> She'd love to see me sitting here right now, wouldn't she, eh? So she could say, I told you so. I gave up everything for Bev, you know. Absolutely everything. I ruined your mother's life. Nearly lost you and our Jacqueline. Made a right mess of things. And all the time, she's just been stringing me along. Treating me like one big bloody joke. Well, that's all I am, isn't it, son? A joke. That's what everybody thinks. 
I still can't believe it. After everything I've done for her. How could she treat me like this? Coffee? No, it, uh, it went cold on me. Do you want me to do you another one? No, no, I'm fine. Just dump it, eh? I hate waste. Hey, I hope that video stuff will be gone when I get back from my mother's. It will be. Are you going round to your mum's again? Yeah, after work. Why? Oh, no, I just wondered, you know. <laughs> Give her my best. Listen. Can you follow her to survey? I'm stuck in the shop. Look, Dad, we've been keeping tabs on her all weekend now, and we still haven't got any evidence. It's time for technology to take over now. How many more loads after this, Mick? One? Uh, another two, maybe. Two? I tell you what, I don't know what we'd have done without you, Jim. Everyone needs good neighbours, eh? <laughs> so, today's the big day, then. Yeah, that's right, Pat. Hey, where's this cat line parched? Back of the flat. You can leg over and get it if you want, you know. Oh, I'll make you a cup of tea. If you want to come over, Sinbad? Oh, cheers, Trish. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks, Pat. Hurry up, hey, Sin. Don't miss the shift here. Take a nose on us, do you? Hey, what are you moving here for, Mick? I mean, the rent must be more than a flat over a shop. Yeah, well, someone's putting the deposit down and we're going to be splitting the rent. Uh... Anyway, that flat's got better memories. I just wanted out. Oh, uh, yeah. Miss Brodie and a six shooter. What happened over all that? She's up for sentencing tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. Holding someone hostage with a gun, plugging a copper. She won't be marking any more own work books for a good few years, I'm telling you. They'll chuck the key away. Let's hope so, Jimmy. Well, I need you to help me, you know. Michael, I'm busy. Can't you get that girlfriend of yours to help? I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing. Anyway, me and Rachel aren't an item anymore. You split up? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Ah, oh, what a shame. You two faced all. From that one, we're just mates, that's all. So. Can we do this or not? I need your help if you want the evidence. Aye, all right. I'll close the shop if I have to. You don't know how much better off you'd have without some younger woman. I don't mean to be funny or anything, son. I know you and Rachel. Just forget it, eh, Dad? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Mind you, I'm almost beginning to wish that I hadn't got involved with somebody younger. Then all this wouldn't have happened. Well, you don't know that anything's happened yet. Let's just work on getting some proof, eh? I hate all this. To think it's ended up like this. I've been taken for a right mug. I've got the estimate for fixing the car and... Hello, Simbad. Uh, Maxwell. Just welcoming our new neighbours. Mick and Simbad are moving into the close today. Oh, right, yeah, I saw the van. Yeah. Mm. Right, uh, thanks anyway, Trish. Uh, You're welcome. Oh, cheers. There you go. Uh, you're a gentleman. Thank you. Oops. I think uh, Rosie Banks's sister might be better off putting this one through the insurance. My God, is it really going to cost that much? Uh, I've got to hire a car tomorrow. I mean, how? I can't manage with that one. That's on the bill, too. But you can't get it till tomorrow? No, it's a real drag. Yeah, it's a pity, because um, Barry Grant wants you to pick up some VIP for him from the airport this afternoon, flying in from the States. This afternoon? Doesn't he realise I've got a business to run? Yeah, well, whoever it is is getting a connection from Heathrow. I wonder who it is. What does he take me for? I mean, I'm not even his business partner anymore. 
Oh, I should be careful. If I were you, it could be an important business contact. Barry does say that if we give him the VIP treatment, it could be beneficial to us. Oh, well, in that case, you'd better get me a decent hire car today, then. I can give this Mr. Mr. Man the red carpet treatment. Look, I've got to go. I've got to dash. I'll see you later, all right? Oh, uh, can you drop that estimate off round at the banks? They'll pass it on to her. Why should I do all your dirty work for you? Because you're so good at it, darling. Four thirty will be fine, Mrs. Carr. Thank you. Bye. Is our Jack about? Oh, she's gone to the bank. Is that why you're here to borrow money off your sister? Very good, Julia. No, I just wanted to remind her that she promised me some driving practice tonight. I've got my test tomorrow. Oh, so what is it now, Mikey? Sixth or seventh attempt? Third, actually. This time, no, no, got it well sussed, no problems. Anyway, can you remind her for us? I'll tell her. So, how are you settling in in Julie's, then? Oh, you don't know what a difference it's made having a man about the house again. Now, now, Julia, telling tales. No, Mike, honestly, she spoils me rotten. Oh, get away with you. I went out to bingo the other night, and when I came back, he'd done me cheese on toast and cocoa. Oh, it's lovely being pampered. Hey, it's worth it getting me smalls done. He's a lovely lad. He'll do anything for me around the house. He gets his privacy, though. I'm not one for interfering as well, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, has he got a phone in his room? Mm -hmm. Well, I was just wondering. I've got some spare extension cable on a phone that I don't need. I just wondered whether he'd like a phone extension in his room. I thought he'd chuck them away. Oh, I don't think I could afford that. Oh, no, I don't want paying for it. You can have it for nothing if he wants. You know, do you want me to ask him? I can do it. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him. It'd be a nice surprise from me. When can you do it? I can fit it today if you want. It's my half day off. I'll call round about half an hour, eh? No problems. Are you sure I can't give you something for it? No, I don't want nothing for it. I might as well use it, then I'd be stuck in the garage, mightn't I? Oh, God love you. Do you know, I used to think you were a proper little sly one, but I think you've changed and for the better. Thanks very much, Trish. OK, boys, back to work. Come on, Jimmy. Hey, uh, somebody was saying you got a fax off Barry Grant. What's he up to? Didn't you see Max go off in a flap earlier? Barry's asked him to pick up some American from the airport and he hasn't got a car. Who is it coming over like that? All we know is he's important and he's travelling as Mr Grant. You don't think it's a wind-up, do you? You know, Barry's coming home himself. You know what he's like. Well, what if it is? What's going to happen to us and the kids if he wants to move back in here? Oh, I don't think it's anything like that. Um, don't suppose any of you lot could recommend a good local car hire firm? Oh, Pat, hey, look no further, kid. I'm your man. Listen, I can get one of the drivers on the job, no props. All parts of the service are corky cars, you know. Well, I don't know. I'll even drive Max in myself. Now, where's he going to get a better offer than that, eh? Well, I'll have to phone Max. Right, I'll get it sorted straight away. Kids, I'll have to take a rain check on the next load, where it comes first, all that, know what I mean? Hard work's at the bottom of the list, though. Yeah, well, come on, and on with it. Thanks for the seats, Rish. You're welcome. Excuse me! What? Oh, not you. Um, sorry to bother you. Well, did you hear anything more about your husband's car? Oh, um, yes, yes. Uh, it's gone into the garage today. Oh, did they say how much it was going to be? Listen, I've really got to make a phone call. Are you visiting your sister? Yeah. Well, if you can hang on for a while, I'll call over. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Sound. Okay, well, I'll try and be as quick as I can. Coming! Oh, come in, love. You all right, Julia? Have you been ringing long? Because I was just watching the end of Neighbours. Um, Peter's not around, is he? No, but you'll have to be quick because it's his afternoon off and all. What a lovely surprise this is going to be for him. <laughs> all right. Oh, you here and all? Yeah, well, I need some health thread and cables and that. You know, I could have asked Peter, but it would have spoiled the surprise, wouldn't it? I was just saying, you'll have to be quick because I don't want him catching you on the job. More like the other way around. What's that, love? Um, are your cables underground? <laughs> don't ask me, love. Well, I need a step ladder to get into the cockloft, you see. To put a phone? Yeah, well, if they're not underground, I'll have to feed them through the roof space. Isn't that right, Dad? Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leaves me for dead with all his technical stuff. <laughs> well, you should be very proud of him, Ron Dixon. Not every lad of his age would put themselves out to do something like this. No. Obviously, it doesn't take after his father. Hiya. Hi. She's come through, love. She's waiting for you. Ah, uh, well, Max got these from the garage this morning. So, the car should be ready in four or five days. Thanks. Do you want a coffee, love? No, no, thanks. God, I don't believe it. 
2,850 quid. God! Okay. Well, unfortunately, Max had to hire another car in order to keep on working. Look, don't you think it might be better if you put this through your insurance? It's a lot to fork out in one go. I am. Um, I... Um, maybe she should talk to Eddie, eh? Yeah, see what he says. I mean, I know you'd lose your no-claims bonus and everything, but... Oh, well, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, you see, the thing is, the garage will need payment before Max can get the car back. Yeah, of course. Just leave it with us, Patricia. Right. Thanks for coming Thank over. All right. Yes. Bye. I never thought it cost anything like this. Nearly £3,000 with the car hire. Oh, there's no need to get upset, love. I feel like telling them to stuff it. You don't think they're trying it on, do you? I don't know, love. But we've only just got back in with the neighbours. I don't want to upset them again. But how can I pay? It's impossible on my money. And if I don't pay straight away, what then? They'll find out I didn't even have any insurance. I'll end up in the courts. No, no, no. Needn't come to that. I'll pay for his car to be fixed. I'll get it out of the winnings. Rose, you can't do that. You've already dipped into them enough. This is for me sister. How can I let you worry yourself sick for £3,000 when I've got it sitting there in your building society account? That means there'll be thousands of pounds disappeared. What'll that say? Well, don't worry about that. Do you want the money or not? I don't know what to do. Look, you'll have to take it. But I feel guilty. You and Ed already gave me that 500. It's no problem. Look, you meet me outside your building society about four o'clock. We'll sort it out then. We can give Max Farnham his money tonight. I don't know what to say. Thanks. Just meet me later, OK? Here we go. Tea's off. I was wondering for that, Julia. Don't be soft. Eh? I made that bed. Oh, sorry. Well, hasn't he got it nice? <laughs> well, I suppose your Bev will have told you all about it. It was very good of her to come round and help to settle him in. Oh, yeah, wasn't he? I was saying to Michael this morning, Peter's such a lovely lad. Don't you think so? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, he's so kind. He's really such a lovely young gentleman. And he's so ambitious, you know. Oh, I. He really wants to get on in life. All he needs is a few thousand pounds, and then he's going to move down to London and open his own exclusive salon. That's why he's saving so hard. I bet he is. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's got aspirations to be a top class hairdresser. He won't be around here for much longer. Oh, not that I want him to go. Like, he's so full of energy, so youthful. <laughs> He makes me feel young again. <laughs> Do you know, what I can understand is why the girls round here haven't snapped him up. Can you? Julie, any chance of getting us that step ladder? Oh, sorry, love, I'll go and get it for you now. <laughs> You think Bev and him, you know, in this bed? I'm busy, Dad. What the hell are you doing? I'm looking. What for? Oh, I don't know. Proof, I suppose. She could have been at it and here with him, and I just wanted to see if... I hate doing this, you know, bugging them. Makes me feel so sleazy. So what? Doesn't bother the government, does it? I'm serious, Michael, it does. Look, Dad, do you want me to set this lot up or what? I don't know. Well, if I don't, you're going to carry on like the way you are. At least if I do, you'll know one way or another. I mean, I might get some good news. But I don't know if I can face the truth. Well, what if they're innocent? I'm doing this to prove there's nothing going on. All right, son, carry on. Who is this fella you're picking up? Hey. Uh... For some Yankee millionaire that Granty knows. <laughs> millionaire? Must be dodgy. <laughs> Probably someone from the Mafia, from what I've heard about Barry Grant. Hey, 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 Lynns, don't be knocking it. Eh? All business for the family firm. Hey, girls, looking good, that. It should be. Mum spent a bomb on decorations. Yeah, well, let's not stint ourselves. Christmas comes but once a year and all that, know what I mean? Hey, it's December this week. And just look at us. Hey, I don't know where this last year's gone. And there we are in our nice new house. All four of us for Christmas, eh, Lynn? <laughs> it's still only November. Yeah, well, I know that. 
He's forgotten. Forgotten what? If you don't know now, you never will. I'll just get some more of them glass balls, Linz. She thinks I've forgotten her birthday and our wedding anniversary. But I have. <laughs> I mean, I've forgotten enough times in the past, but things are different now. Word on the off, kid. <laughs> no, I think I'll get some more of these. Is it late night shopping tonight, then? Yeah, I'll come with you. There's nothing you need to go. Me? What would I need to go? Told you to forget. <laughs> oh, well, you think I've forgotten your birthday and our wedding anniversary? Hmm? Well, you're wrong. <laughs> You've just told him, haven't you? Uh, uh... I have, and my man has crossed my heart. Got us all sorted, have you? Yeah. I thought we might have a little slap up meal at Granty's, maybe do a club. Could I open a few bottles of the Isle Bubbly Jubbly? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's too good for you, girl. And I might, just might, buy you a nice present. Oh, why? Like what? Just uh, mind that birthday, girl, OK? Anyway, <sighs> gotta go. Oh, go on. What is it? No, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotta go. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't tell him? <laughs> I have, but I'm honest. He's not like he used to be. He's definitely changed. You can say that again. How much longer? It's all done. All done, Julia. Come and try it. You sure it's going to work properly? It'll switch itself on at the same time every day and run for eight hours. If anyone says a word in that room, it'll pick it up. They're not going to see anything, are they? Well, I've put a microphone on the light fitting. It'll work, that, trust me. Oh, it's a good job you two don't run British Telecom. They'll be losing hundreds of pounds a second. Well, it's a bit complicated, you know, with all the cables and that. <laughs> yeah, all right, come on, let's go. Oh, are you sure I can't give you anything for your trouble? No, thanks, Julia. I'm sure Peter wouldn't like you not to take anything. Oh, no, Julia, no, there's no need to tell Peter we put it in for him. Why not? If he made up. No, no, just leave us out of it. I wouldn't like him to think he's taking charity off us, you know. Oh, go away. He's not like that. I know, it's just that he helped our Jacqueline out a lot, you see, Julia, so uh, let him have this one on us, eh? <laughs> just tell him, she's crazy present for him. Yeah, crazy present. I should be waiting for you cups of cocoa when you come back from the beach. <laughs> ah, thanks. Oh, I won't forget you for this, Michael. So, what do you think, Trish? Well, it's ridiculous. It's far too big. Hey, you got this through a contact. Come a massive discount, kid. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to take it back. <laughs> Can't do that. I've paid for it now. Well, what's Max going to say? Well, he didn't mind when I brought Lily Savage to the opening of his restaurant in it, did he? Yeah, but Lily Savage is a celebrity. I don't know who it is you're picking up from the airport. Yeah, well, I thought Grancy said he was supposed to have the VIP treatment, this is it. And as it's some yank, I thought he'd feel at home in this. Well, I really don't think it's suitable at all. Well, I'm sorry, Trish, but I'll have to charge you for it anyway. And let's face it, where's your Maxi going to find anything else at this time of day? <sighs> OK. I suppose so. Listen, just leave it to corky cars, eh? I'll sort your Maxi. My dad would go ape if he knew you were here. Look, never mind it all, fella. I want to talk to you. Um, what are you doing here? Look, I don't want any trouble. I just want to talk to Lindsay. Get them shoes off. What? You heard? Look at the muck you've trod in. Come on, get them off. Oh, where the hell have you been? I was just fishing. Oh, have you been messing about with maggots and worms? Can't I just talk to Lindsay? Say what you've got to say and then go. Mum, there's no need to be like that. Oh, why isn't there? He let you down, girl. All them promises and where did they get you? Back here with me and your dad. Look, that's what I wanted to say. I've changed. Honest, I have, Linz. I can't stand in that flat without you and our Kylie. Can't you give us another chance, eh? Oh, What's this? What are you doing here? Jimmy's shoes. Uh, so get up, go with this posh house. Out, sunshine. Dad, no, he came here to talk. He's got nothing to say to us. Come on, get lost. 
Go on, get out! Jimmy, all right, Don't waste your time fishing, or you're blaming me for you. Look, I want to talk to my wife and kids, and you can't stop me. Out! Give us another chance, Linz. Jimmy, Jimmy, go on! Calm down, Jimmy. Come on. Go on. Hey, what about me trainees? <sighs> there, trainees, beat it. No, I'm not having that. Lindsay, I don't want him in this house again. You could have given him a chance to have his say. No way he's a dead beat him. He's not fit to wash your feet. You have no right to do that. He came to see me. For the very first time, he actually came and asked to see me. Why did you have to do that? Oh, tell him, Mum. Oh, love, I've told you. Forget about him. He's a waste of space. Look, maybe we should... Have you got a short memory or what? Do you really want him back on the scene, eh? He's full of high ideas and promises. And where's he got here? Nowhere. Nothing in the bank and a crappy little flat. Oh, isn't that nice of her? I told you she thought the world, yeah. I know. Hey, you'll be able to ring me any time you like now, won't you? Yeah, but only if it's to book me hairdressing lessons. Talking of which... Dada! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope you don't mind, but I've decided to call him Rob. Oh, that's cruel. There's been a good few students learned on this, poor fella. Mr. Manson to me. Why do you think I've called him Ron? Poor old Ron. Yes, well, poor old Ron served his purpose, hasn't he? I think it's a shame. Now, nah, he's had his day, hasn't he? He's dead old now. And when you've used him, that's it. He's going to get the chop. Him man is nothing. The best stylist in the world couldn't put hair like that, right? Now, nah, he's not worth bothering with, Beth. Let's just do what we've got to do and then get rid of him. So what are you going to do? Shoot him at all? Well, you could stab him with those scissors you bought. Oh, I quite like him. I think it's a shame. He's got such a nice face. Are you kidding? He's gormless. He embarrasses me every time I clap my eyes on him. I suppose he does serve a purpose, though. I suppose so. I still think it's a shame he has to go. So what? You'll have everything you want, then. Money of your own and that. You'll be able to take the hairdressing world by storm. Just you and me, kid. Oh, thanks to poor old Ron. Hey, we could even ask that Monday Jordash one out the better one of Patio. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Rose, are you sure about this? Do you think I'd leave my own sister in the lich? You said it yourself. How are you going to raise £3,000 for them car repairs, eh? Yeah, no, but... Right, we'll get what you need for the Farnhams, and I better have a few bob as well. More spends? You joking? Oh, look, don't start again. But, well, OK. I might have dipped into it a few times, but that's what it's for, isn't it? Enjoying yourself. I mean, we could all be dead tomorrow. Anyway, I think I might have got a bit carried away and spent too much, so I just need a few more bob to help me win it back before Eddie finds out. Oh, all right, I told you, didn't I? And what makes you so sure you can win it back? Well, I've got to have another good win soon. I'm bound to the amount of scratch cards I buy. And there's a special jackpot down the bingo tonight, 20,000 quid. So I can pay it all back and still be quids in. Oh, I'm just feeling like I should be stopping you. Oh, don't be soft. Anyway, it's up to you, love. But I'm giving you an interest-free loan there, and no rush to pay that back either. So come on, sis, let's get that money. I'll win it back, and you can stop worrying about paying the Farnhams. Hi, hi. Any news? Yeah, the people on the Heathrow flat are just coming through. Oh, right, well, great. <sighs> you know, I shouldn't be hanging around here. I should be at work. Are you sure that's the only vehicle we could get? Hey, hang on. Here they come. <laughs> but what's going on here? You sure this is the right flight? Yes, of course I'm sure. I know what's going on here. Barry Grounds has done his usual trick and let me down. Well, we could just carry on waiting, I suppose. No. I'm tired of you know, giving the run now. Come on, let's go. Oh. Max! Jimmy! It's all right, Jim. No need for the sign. All right, Max. Terry? Barry said he'd have a car waiting for me. Tell me, mate. I never... I never dreamt that it would be you. It's all right, I won't bite. So, can we go home now? Andrews, please. 